Hello everyone, welcome back to Puff TV Studio, I'm Amin and we are right here in Tallinn, Estonia, right in the heart of the Black Knights Film Festival. Today we're gonna talk about a film called Everything That Will Happen Has Already Happened. And we are having a great director of the film over here, Vlada Nikolic. Thank you for coming up and how are you doing today? Thank you for having me, I'm doing great. Wonderful. Are you ready for the interview? Um, we'll find out. Okay, <laughs> let's start and, and see. Okay, so mm, the film that you have brought to our festival is a collaborative film, which means that you have done it uh, within like different countries, different people, and itself sounds really cool. So let's start uh, and see how you guys actually have done it, like how uh, you connected to each other from different parts of the world, how you could manage to make content connected, relatable to each other from different parts of the world, combine it and make a film out of that and bring it to the festival. Okay, <laughs> that's that's a handful. Well, um, it started with, you know, after after we had the pandemic hell and the, 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 the shutdowns and everything. So I wanted to make a film that, that somehow reflects this new time that we are in. And then I was thinking how to do this, and it would be really interesting to have a film where you have stories from all around the world. So I started by uh, contacting some filmmakers that I knew, and to see if they were they would be willing to collaborate on this project. And everybody got excited. Um, it also helped that I'm teaching at a university in New York, so a lot of our my alums actually are from all over the world so i started with them and we started um, with some stories from uh, actually lebanon from belgium from uh, venezuela and so those were the filmmakers i knew and then it kind of started expanding from there so it was very organic in the sense that we started talking to each other i had this general idea of what the um, film would be like um, and but they had complete freedom in terms of the casting and and to tell the stories we would just wanted to create something that would have um, some kind of universal storyline that would fit together. Um, so we started by conversations, then you know they would write the script, we would go back and forth, and then luckily because we're you know, in a time now where this can all be done through you know, online and Zooms and, and, and all kinds of other things, so we would exchange you know, the content and send it back and forth. They started with the scripts, I would then comment on the scripts, then they would go shoot their stories. Uh, um, send it back to me and then we would work together on the editing room you know that uh, I mean in the editing process and and while we were shooting the main story which was happening in New York that would uh, connect all these uh, short stories together into a feature film wonderful but having this sort of um, collaboration needs a quite a lot of commitment like you actually, it's not the email or the words you say in the resume and bye bye and that's all. You have to actually think about the things that you have written, you have said in the call and then you have done it. Uh, that's wonderful that you guys actually could find this commitment and do this job. It, it is wonderful and it's amazing to see. But uh, you have pointed out some sort of stuff in your answer. I would like to zoom more on them. First of all is New York. Uh, New York plays a big role in the film and uh, it's symbolized, it seems. Um, maybe it's because the diverse uh, population it is, it has, or uh, sim being symbolic itself, New York itself is symbolic. So uh, is it the reason that you used it as something that has a big role in the film or some other reason? Um. Well, I mean, I've been in, you know, originally I'm from the former Yugoslavia when it was still called Yugoslavia and I came to New York in 1990 and so I've been there over 30 years now and to me it was always a city um, that is somewhere in between where people from all over the world come. So I was always, it's it's something that in many of my previous films it has been a theme, you know, people who come there for different reasons, why, how and so on. Um, and I think it's, you know, somebody else said that actually the the uh, Russian poet Yevtushenko said that, that you know this is a uh, all humanity in one drop okay. uh, that is in New York and I think this is why this is kind of the center where this story happens and actually the lead um, actress the character is also somebody who um, represents that she is uh, 
um, who somebody who is an immigrant. Her mother is Russian, her father Ukrainian. She grew up in Lithuania, and she's in New York uh, finishing her PhD. And these stories are actually uh, part of the of uh, her dissertation, which is collecting together. So that's kind of what the uh, main story is. And then she meets somebody who is a very unusual character who is actually a New Yorker, um, but he is uh, somebody who has a very um, very unique uh, mindset and so there is a certain story between the two of them as they, you know, collect these stories and, you know, kind of there is a romance that happens between these two characters uh, in the middle of this. So it's kind of, I think, um, the idea at least is to give us um, a, a certain moment in time where the world is now um, and I hope that we manage that and it's a I think it's very interesting because some these themes again came out organically so it wasn't said that you know okay you know here we are now this is what has to happen but there are certain themes that came out of these shorts because you know as we talked about what is it like to live now in this moment that we're in where there's so many uh, strange things and so many crises happening and then you know especially <clears throat> for people who are young now right and how does this world look um, when you are in such different places like New York or in Venezuela or you know we have even short vignettes coming from Syria and then you know we have this actually uh, long long I mean long long short uh, from that was shot in Beirut so Shirin Khaled did this amazing short film this was before what is happening now she shot this in uh, 23, but she shot this over, she was directing over Zoom, um, actually with some very famous Lebanese actors and uh, a crew of like 30 people. Um, and again, all of this we did on, on almost no budget. So it's really a, a testament to the passion and to the incredible commitment of all the filmmakers without whom this film would, would not have happened. Great, wonderful. You're bringing great, great points that I would like to ask, so <laughs> great job. So, uh, but uh, first of all, let's uh, look around the content of the film and see what is happening over there. So, um, the film talking about so many problems from Corona pandemic to the economy inequality, then goes to war, then goes back to some other problems. But um, I would like to know that how could you find the relation between these problems because they are actually in different types of the themes uh, from war to economy from economy okay when war and economy are sort of sort of relatable but for example to coronavirus and then come back to some other problems it is uh, um it needs actually a big sort of a skill to make a relation between them how did you make this idea how was the process of making the sort of bridge between each theme um <clears throat> well, you know, I think to me it's like the the essence or the center of all these themes is always the human experience. And I think that to me is always interesting and has been something that I've been interested in in all my work is that, you know, what connects us, not what divides us. And I think that in, in, in essence, right, if you look at what we call, you know, not to be pretentious, but, you know, the human experience, it's it's similar wherever you are. It's only that you know, sometimes these things happen um, that people are, you know, forced to deal with certain circumstances, right? That then they, that brings up um, some parts in their character or, you know, the struggles that they, they have to confront, you know? So um, it's just that now I think, you know, personally, and this is what, what, what was kind of the starting point of the film, because I think when, you know, we had the shutdown, right? The lockdown during Corona, and that was, I think, such a moment that was unprecedented, at least in our lifetimes, that all of a sudden the whole world stood still. Um, and this kind of, you know, and then when it started moving, it feels like everybody wanted to forget that this even happened. And I thought, well, this is so strange, right? Because we okay. shouldn't forget it. You know, it's not, we shouldn't be traumatized by it, but, but you know, it kind of, I think, opened up the door to really see like, well, there's so much wrong, right? That's happening now and we can't really, think about that, oh, somebody like all these whatever political structures so on is going to solve that because we saw that this is not going to happen. So then when you zero down on the on the on the individual level, right, how do people deal with these circumstances? How do they live, etc.? Um, and I think that, you know, there's from these stories, what came out was that it's really a lot of um, 
I, I like to believe, and I hope that, you know, people who see this film will confirm this, that it really brought out that aspect of the connected, the shared humanity. So that in the end of the day, the film is not depressing, but it actually brings up a certain level of hope uh, to all of us. Okay. Oh, that was a brief, actually, explanation. Nice one. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, let's talk about the budget. I know, and everybody knows that making a film needs a lot of money. And this is the truth that everyone should believe it, actually. But uh, you guys have done a great job with a little and a low sort of budget. And uh, with basically so many crew, eight just directors. Okay, you are the main director, as we know, but we have uh, seven more to go. And they are educators as well. We have cast, crew. And uh, how could you actually manage with a little bit of budget in a big city like New York and also some other part of the world? Uh, how could you manage to wrap the project up in the standard way of the quality? Okay, now for that, to answer this fully, we could have an hour long interview, <laughs> sure. to give you the short version. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I've been doing low budget films for a long time. Actually, I, I was at <clears throat> POF uh, with another film 10 years ago called Allure, which we also did uh, on a very low budget. And um, the way I approach this, I mean, for one, I've been making films for a long time, so um, I have a, a lot of people who I've worked with and because we had fun doing it together and we believe in each other and I always treat everybody as equal collaborators so it's not like oh yeah I'm the director and you work but it's like we're all working on this together so the question always is like you know when I approach uh, filmmakers and others well you know this is the project this is the budgets it's ridiculous but I think it's going to be an interesting project if you have the time and the energy and you want to be part of this you know then we can do this together and I think what happened this time again was that you know a lot of those the, the people who participated just liked to and wanted to say something you know about this moment and to have this freedom you know because the one thing low budget and no budget films you know are you know there are many restrictions and you have to work with you know a lot of creativity but the one thing that's great about them is they also give you freedom because you don't have you know certain things when you work with bigger budgets and, you know, uh, big name actors, you know, especially in, in the US, um, then there are certain things you have to do or you can't do, etc. But in this case, you know, you have the, uh, the total freedom to really uh, approach the subject the way you want it to. So, so that was kind of how we started. And to, to be honest, you know, again, we thought we we're going to shoot with, you know, small cameras. Again, the nice thing is about the digital technology that allows you to really produce uh, amazing quality on, on, you know, with, with relatively low means, with small means. But, you know, again, then some people I worked with before, uh, they really liked the project and they brought in. So we shot with, you know, at the end we had like three red cameras and a 30-man crew and, you know, uh, it really looked <laughs> like a big production, um, which is great, you know, because, and it was really, again, just because of the enthusiasm and the passion of the people involved. So, you know, without them, this film wouldn't exist at all. Exactly. Amazing. Amazing. All right. For the last question, before wrapping up, I would like to ask this question that uh, this is sort of a prominent question that I ask from directors because I really want to know their answers about uh, what they made. So um, if you would like, if you would have the time and this possibility to go back in time, uh, what would you... A remove or add to your film or you wouldn't even touch it that's a great question actually um you know that's i mean i don't think i can really uh, honestly answer that i would uh change it mm -hmm. because this at least for this film it's something that came about so you know uh, organically True. Um, that I don't think that it could have been done differently. You know, if it was something that, you know, it was, you know, fully scripted, planned and everything, and we were just executing in the production, and then, oh, this scene maybe didn't turn out the way um, it was scripted and so on. But in this case, really, I, I don't think I would change anything, you know, in, in the sense that it really, I think, became um, a, a something that is an expression of all these people and all these places that got involved in this project. So I'm very happy with the way it came out. That's interesting that most of the directors actually having the same answer. And it's surprising for me. Like they, they are they're good with what they have actually done. That's nice. All right. Thank you so much for coming out. It was wonderful and it was such a pleasure to talk with you. 
and great job. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. And once again, thank you so much for watching us. As always, I'm telling you, go check out our social media. There's so many contents over there. You have to watch all of them. You're gonna see so many amazing contents over there in YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and any other platforms that we have. So thank you so much for coming up. And um, I guess that's pretty much it. Till another interview. See you.